So I'm just wanting to ask that Sarah's higher self be able to come in and help and assist with the first part of the session. And when you feel attuned to Sarah's higher self, let me know. Yes. Okay. As your higher self is here, Sarah, we want to scan the body of Sarah from head down to her toes. And as we're scanning from the head, the crown down to her feet, I want to ask and understand if there are any limits or blockages or anything that we need to know about at this time. Okay, so immediately it feels like there's this swirling in the mind. So amplified thoughts. Amplified thoughts. And what uh, are those amplified thoughts from? Like, what can you help us understand a higher perspective of that? So she needs to learn how to be present during the day. So uh, they're showing um, her meditating. So how can you meditate during the day with your eyes open? So um, she's getting caught in some thought loops that do not benefit her. Um, it's causing some emotions to rise up. And so just practice coming back to the present moment. And the more and more she comes back to the present moment, what will she feel? Less emotional, like less of the amplified emotion, because when you amplify your thoughts, you amplify your emotions within your body. Um, and just peace, like peace on the inside for everything that is. So I'm seeing visions of her like out in nature. Nature is very important for her. Um, nature immediately gets her out of her mind. And is this because her crown chakra is too open or is this more or less something that's in the mind? She has a very powerful crown chakra and it's just now beginning to open. So that's why it's most important that she learns how to come back to the present moment because um, her thoughts, as that her frequency raises, her thoughts will become more amplified. So it's just learning how to like relax and come back into the present so that these racing thoughts don't affect your reality. And is there anything from your side that you guys can do for that a little bit right now? Or is this something that she needs to learn to master? Yeah, so during the day when she starts to feel like she's in these thought patterns, um, just go outside and put your feet on the ground. She's very connected to nature. And then um, just bring yourself back to the present. And this is going to take a lot of practice, but it's just like, bringing yourself back into balance, like just can get out of your mind and into your heart. Just take a couple deep breaths through your heart when you begin to feel like this. But we are shining golden light um, onto her mind. Just taking some of those thoughts away, some of that worry away. Just clearing some of the density here. Is any of the density related to anything from this current life or a past life? Not so much. Um, it's more from her current life and her crown. Um, and it's more just like trusting herself or like trusting the information that she's being given. So it's like the angels want to give her information and um, these thoughts are blocking the information from just being downloaded into the body. That makes sense. I, um, I appreciate this information. 
Now, as we move down the chakras and down the channel of pathways down to her feet, as you're moving down, do you see anything more um, that we can look at and work on? So her third eye um, is starting to open, um, but it is a little blocked. So we're just telling her like, um, to trust in her abilities, that she is very clear audient. Um, so it's just like learning how to still her mind even more so that she can like build that two way communication with her higher guidance. Um, but she'll be able to just like speak directly with them mind to mind because she's very telepathic and very clear audit or she's a very clear audient being. Now, when she does get the information, what do you suggest that she does with it when when the information, the clear audience works? What do you suggest for her to do at that point? Just open the rest of her chakras, really work on opening her lower chakras um, so that she can like bring this information into her body and actually embody it. Because um, we can be given information all day long, but if your chakras, your bottom chakras are closed, um, you can't actually embody and use the information in your life. Okay. So they're saying like really work with the lower three chakras. How do her lower three chakras and her other chakras look? Her heart looks beautiful. Her heart, she actually has like, um, her heart, it's her inner child is like asking for a little love. Um, so just going into meditation with the intention of the, of meeting the inner child or of healing the inner child, um, the inner child like really wants to come out and play. <laughs> um, but she has a beautiful heart. It's very bright. It's very angelic. Her frequency is like very angelic. And um, she has a lot of love for everyone around her. So just sending all of that love back to her and loving herself just as much as she loves everyone else in her life. Why is it so important to send that love back to yourself before loving other people? Because you have to take care of yourself before you take care of others. And then by loving yourself, it will increase your frequency and help you live from a place of love. So then you'll be a magnet for that same kind of love. Um, when you love yourself first, when you go within first, it affects every aspect of your life. So you have to go within first to bring that joy and that love into your outside world. And so she has a beautiful loving heart where she needs to take more time to send that love to herself. And what about her lower chakras? How are those looking? How is she doing with those being activated she has an attachment in her solar plexus mm. what is this attack attachment let tell us more he says his name is robert and what's he doing there i just said or i heard it that he's protecting her from childhood trauma now, does he have good intentions for her and he's playing that role out well, or does he kind of walk the line between good and bad? Um, I think he, like he thinks that he's helping her. Um, but her higher self is telling me that it's not serving her highest purpose. 
So did he attach during childhood or did he follow her from a previous lifetime or when did he come to be the attachment that he is? So immediately I heard childhood. Um, it's like I'm seeing her crying. She looks like six or seven. Um, and she's like alone on a step. And it's like he attached to her. To, um, and then once he was attached, like he felt like he could help like protect her. But it's actually Rob block. It's like blocked her from stepping into her power. Okay. Did he? Let's just learn a little bit more and honor Robert. And was he a being like a human before he became an attachment, or was he? Has he ever incarnated on this earth? Yeah. So I'm seeing him as like he. It feels like it's like the 1800s and he is like working on a railroad and repairing the railroad. And why did he stay around after his passing? So he was working on the railroad and he got hit by a train and it was very sudden um and his and very painful and so I think that he was just like shocked and but then I just see him like seeing Sarah crying and attaching to her does this give him kind of fulfillment while being here by being attached to her what kind of like does how does he feel being able to do that job yeah, so it's like no one protected him. Like he didn't have anyone to protect him. So he just wanted to help protect her. Now, Robert, we just want to say thank you for caring about another human being and wanting to be there for them. Um, but I want to talk to Sarah's higher self and ask if this is something we should go ahead and remove right now, or if Sarah has the capabilities of removing this herself. Yes, we would like it removed today. Okay. And how best can we move forward in honoring Robert and allowing him to peacefully move on and also giving Sarah the empowerment that she doesn't need Robert anymore? She has done a lot of work with her solar plexus lately. So this will removing Robert and just knowing that um, as long as she continues to work with her solar plexus, she will be fine. Um, towards the end of this transmission, we will also talk about the importance of protecting your energy um, because she is an extremely bright light. So she is... Uh, susceptible to these attachments because especially um, some lower dimensional souls that they get confused when they go towards the light especially if it was more something that was not in alignment for their soul contract now can you help robert see if he were to release where he would go and if he goes to the light can you help him see and embody and feel what that will feel like yeah so i think like he's been listening to this conversation and he just like just the awareness that he's not helping her like i think he did really truly feel like he just wanted to help and so just knowing that he's not helping her it's like he's taking archangel michael's hand Hmm. I was going to ask if we needed to use Ar Archangel Michael. I just wanted to reassure Robert, though, by him going that he's not, not, you know, that he's not, that he's letting her be like, he wants to be her protector. So I just want him to be reassured 
that she's going to be okay and that he can move on and explore the lives that he wants to explore um, and to honor him for the fact that he wanted to help. I think that's really important. So we call in Archangel Michael at this time. And Archangel Michael, we ask that holding Robert's hand, that you guide him to the light. We also ask you to take your blue flame sword and to cut that tie between the two, the attachment, and to seal it so that it never needs to be reattached again. And once you do that, Archangel Michael, we ask you to lead Robert to the light and to his next place of his journey. And how does that feel now? There is higher self. That feels good. Um, but there is, there's two more. There's one in the sacral and one in the shoulder. Okay. Let's talk about the one in the sacral since we're in that area. Okay. So immediately, um, I heard the name Alice and there it's like, I can see Sarah in the hospital. Um, and it was like fear that let, yeah, it was fear that let Alice attach to her. What kind of fear? Fear of not being there for her children so I'm not sure if like I'm not getting clear answers this was like her near-death experience or like which time in the hospital this was now is Alice what is Alice doing by being attached like did she have the same thing as robert or did she have a different purpose for attaching to her they're showing me like um they were trying to like revive alice um and they couldn't revive her and it's like she had an out-of-body experience and didn't know where to go so she attached to Sarah because Sarah's light is so bright. Hmm. Now, can we help Alice move on? Yeah. So I don't even think that Alice has really been affecting her that much. It was more like um, Alice was just confused and didn't know where to go. Okay. So Alice, we honor your life and we honor your journey. And we ask that Archangel Michael come and lead you to the light. And we ask that Archangel Michael take his sword and cut that tie and seal it so that it never needs to be attached again. And we want to fill that area that Alice and Robert both were in and fill them with sacred golden light. And how does that feel now? It feels good. Um, so let's move to the shoulder and see what's going on there with an attachment. So this has been with her for lifetimes. And it's like, I'm feeling like the heaviness of her shoulder. Like it's causing like heaviness in her shoulder. And does this attachment have a name? Is it, has, did it incarnate as a human or is it an entity? It's not really giving me a name, but it's like, I'm getting this vision of like, she was, on earth, um, in some kind of war, and she's riding a horse with like her, like she looks like a knight kind of and she's like riding her horse with like her sword and her like her dagger and um it's like she came up to a, another soldier and stabbed him 
and then his soul attached to her and it's been attached to her shoulder ever since. Did she stab him in the shoulder? Where'd she stab him? She stabbed him like more in the stomach, but as she was like stabbing him in the stomach, he hit her shoulder. Um, So it's like, that shoulder pain and then also like it's like when he died he attached to her through that pain in the shoulder and And then it feels like it feels like really heavy and it feels like her energy hasn't been flowing through her shoulder and then why did did he not why when her soul left her body in that lifetime did he not, did he to continue to reincarnate with her? Like, why didn't he go to the light? I think he was really upset that he killed her or that, like, she killed him. Um, and so he's been, like, causing that pain in her shoulder ever since. And what can we do to honor him and to acknowledge his passing to allow him to pass on and to release this energy. He's just saying that he was angry because he felt like he didn't get to choose his death or like he wasn't ready to die. Was his death a part of his soul contract? Yes. But he was not aware of that. Is he aware of that now? Yes. We'd like to bring the white light of healing for him and place that around him to bring him healing, to bring him forgiveness, to bring him honor, to bring him release, and to bring him a guiding map for his next lifetime that he wants to experience. How does he feel? That was beautiful. It was like the white light. He like lifted up out of the shoulder as an angel and went back to source. It was beautiful. I love like it that. It felt really loving and warm. I love that. I want him to be able to go to experience more and just stop holding on to that anger um, to be able to go experience more wonderful things. So can we seal that area on the shoulder and heal? put white light of healing into it? so that it helps repair that space and fill it with that high frequency. Yeah. So we're definitely shining more light onto it just so that um, her energy can start flowing through her shoulder again. Absolutely. And as you're, we've done this body scan, as you guys look around your the highest higher self, sorry. Is there anything more that you see that we can work on at this time? There is a crack like in her energy field from a past life that she's been holding on to. Now, what do we need to learn about that past life? Or do we need to do a BQH session of her own in person to explore these? Or what can we do? So it was a lifetime in Lemuria. And she's been holding on to, like, the responsibility Mm. of Lemuria. And this is also, it's like, um, it's affecting her energy field and her heart. Because, um, like, she feels responsibility for her family. But this Lemurian past life is making her, like, um, she's feeling like too responsible. Like it's giving her a lot of anxiety. Is there anything you guys can do at, right now to help, help with that crack? Can you help close it all the way? Can you help us at all with this? Okay. So they're showing me what happened was, um, it's like she was a teacher in Lemuria 
she taught like little kids um it's almost like she was like a kindergarten teacher (laughs) and she was teaching um little kids and when the collapse of Lemuria happened it's like she felt like she was responsible for all of these children that died and she's Mm. been holding on to that in her energy field Mm. so just uh, just her being aware of this incident, just knowing that this is not hers to carry, um, that Lemuria would have fallen either way. And then we are shining powerful golden energy into her entire energy field. And we're just repairing that crack in her energy field. But this is also just um just knowing about this uh will also help repair those cracks okay and then if in the future she wants to explore that lemurian lifetime is that option available to her yes absolutely okay i love that and i appreciate that um does this does her job in lemuria does it apply to what she is doing now in her personal life as far as her children like is she essentially repeating that same cycle as taking on the role as a teacher? Yeah, so this is a lot of the reason why in her soul, she just knew it was the right thing to do to homeschool her children. Um, But I guess it's just like also learning the lesson of Um, what you are responsible for and what you're not so it's like learning the lesson of like sometimes uh, like one everyone's on their own journey Um, so sometimes like these outside things will happen that are out of your control but just stepping back into the present moment and loving all of it just finding the beauty in the present moment and just appreciating like the love that you do have and appreciating like the moments that you do have with them. I love that. I love that. And how are we doing on the scan now? Have we repaired most of the, and found out the higher perspectives for most of the things going on right now? Or is there anything more you can see? Yeah, definitely looks a lot better. We're shining orange light into her sacral because her sacral is not that activated. Um, So we just urge her to work with her sacral every day. Um, And then also her root. So um, it's really just like trusting in the unknown and turning her traumas into wisdom. So she's on like this beautiful path of transformation right now. And so it's just learning how to change, um, how to use the things that happened to her as wisdom so I'm seeing that there's still like a lot of density in her lower chakras like there's a lot of emotion like a lot of emotion from her childhood that needs to be released so it's just like going into meditation with the intention to release the emotion in her lower chakras and just letting that emotion out and just letting it come to the surface and just letting it be felt it just it's like all this emotion that just wants to be felt but once it's felt it will be released from the body so she has some homework to do of being in all these things that you've let us know today especially being in the present appreciating the president's gratitude uh conscious like attention to those lower chakras to activate them daily to acknowledge them to release the feelings so she's got some some homework to do and if you guys would say in a, a perfect world if you guys were to hear all this and remove all this from her would what would that do for her would that help her or hurt her in a way so her andromeda self just came to me um and just said like thank you so much for the work that I've done with her recently and she's just telling me that like once she gets all of this out of her body it's like her Andromedan self is like 
here waiting for her, like so excited to connect with her. I love that. I love that. Um, she feels, she feels so fun. She feels like fluttery. <laughs> She's like, we're going to dance together and we're going to um, like, we're going to dance in the wild together and be out in nature together and play with the fairies together. <laughs> but so she, so her and Drama and self can see the future where Sarah has worked through all these things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because this is the path that Sarah is on. And then life will feel much more light and happy and joy and in sync with the Andromedan self. Yes, absolutely. All right. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, we appreciate all the beautiful healing and we ask for that the, the white light, the orange light, all the beautiful golden light, just be able to stay with Sarah for at least the next 24 hours to really just be with her and allow her to, um, immerse herself in that energy. And um, Sarah did have a question, a couple questions. So can the higher self uh, assist us with these or whoever the higher self feels appropriate? Yes. So um, Sarah wanted to know if she was a male in a past life. Yes, of course. So okay. her energy is um, she has the, the mother goddess consciousness that is the same consciousness as, as mother earth. So her frequency, her natural frequency is feminine. So in these past lifetimes, it is, um, it has been beneficial for her to come in as a, as the masculine energy to balance her two energies together. So on a lot of other planets, she has been a male because it actually keeps her very balanced. That makes sense. So if you come in too many times as a woman, you start to be kind of overbalanced as a woman. And so you're naturally take on being a male energy to help balance that. Yes. Okay. And then... Um, when she was having her child, she had what she felt like was an out-of-body experience. What can you give us as far as information regarding that? So she is actually able to astral project very easily. So um, this is why she's had multiple experiences, either out-of-body um, or in the void because she's able to actually uh, project her consciousness from her body very easily. So in these moments of pain, fear, um, it's almost like she has mastered the art of astral projection over lifetimes. So it's just natural for her in these situations to leave her body. Um, so this is something that she can practice more. Um, and she can just learn to astral project like at night when she goes to sleep and she could um, remote view as well. Now, when she astral projects, does that put her at more of a vulnerability to get attachments? Yeah, so it's very important for her to protect her energy. So um, especially with the entities that we removed today, um, we suggest to just protect your energy every day. So you can just do this by sitting in meditation or just before you start your day, just saying, I put a sphere of protection around me. I put a sphere of protection around my electronics. Um, I put a pyramid of protection around my home. I protect me and my children from any negative entities, frequencies, or AI. I protect me. Uh, protect myself from anything that no longer serves my highest purpose. And you are that powerful. That's all that it has to be. So this is something that not only Sarah can do, but anybody can use that to protect themselves. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So Good. it is important to protect your energy, especially as light workers, because your light is so bright. 
Um, and then there are other outside influences. But as long as you are the light, as long as you are protecting yourself, there is nothing to fear. And the, um, the more she has quite a list of homework, the more she does that homework, will it be easier for her than to um, work with her astral traveling and everything like that? All of her, all of her senses, her clear audience, everything, the more and more she does her inner work, will that more and more become easier to her to use those senses? Yes, Absolutely. And it's like, I can just like feel her Andromedan self like clapping behind me. Like her Andromedan self is like so happy for her and that she's on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> like you can do it. All right. We need a cheer squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she's had past readings by uh, a practitioner. We will not mention the name, but we know you understand who we're talking about. But she felt like after the reading that she no longer uh, resonated with that uh, practitioner. What can you let her know about that? So when we are in lower vibrations, we attract uh, people of a lower vibration to us. So this is why it was a few late, few years later where she ne uh, no longer resonated with this information. So as her frequency raises, then she'll begin attracting um, people like Sierra to her that match her higher frequency, um, or she'll be in resonance with higher vibrational information. But it is still also when you receive that information, it, it's just listening to your heart and learning um, to build your own discernment. I love that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that that practitioner is good or bad. It sounds like more or less that practitioner is a stepping stone for people coming upon their ascension. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like people that are just starting to wake up that um, match that vibration. He is a very good starting point because at least he's getting them in like interested in this information. So like those people may not resonate right away with people of a higher frequency because you can only understand the information that you vibrate it. Right. And I feel like some of those practitioners that are kind of more flamboyant in like a showman in the way they do things are not necessarily such a bad thing because they catch people's attention to then get those people to ask the questions then to move on their journey. So I don't necessarily feel like they're bad. They serve a purpose for sure. Like we all do. Yes, absolutely. And then okay. just um, like, even if you connect with someone of a higher frequency years later, you may not resonate with them anymore because everything is changing. People are always changing. Um, and if they're on their own journey. So even though you resonate with them on one point in your life, you may not resonate with them even the next day, just because people are always changing. There's always evolution. Makes sense. Um, nothing's good or bad. It's all purposeful is they, what they say. <laughs> um, so we wanted to call in Sarah's dad, if he's able to come and connect with us um, and ask him if he has any messages. So is he able to come connect with us? Yes. All right. Um, well, we welcome you and we appreciate you coming to connect with us. We just wanted to ask, do you have any beautiful messages for your daughter? Just that I love you so much and I wish I could be there with my grandchildren. Um, you're such a beautiful mother. Um, and just to... Like, I'm feeling a little bit of, like, resentment um, in some way. And he's just saying, like, just release that. Like, um, he didn't realize it when he was alive. But, but now, like, he's realized that it's just all love. Like, she, he just doesn't want her to hold on to anything. Um, 
because she's so beautiful and she's so loved and it's okay to release all this and turn it into wisdom and that he knows that she is meant to help so many people. Mm. And is he at peace where he's at? Yeah, he feels like very, very peaceful. It's beautiful. Is he with other family members that have passed? Immediately I heard grandma. And then. Yeah, he's just saying that, like, if he had known what he knows now, like, he wished he could have been there for her more. But he didn't, like, understand his emotions or what he was going through either. But that she's such a beautiful mom and that he's so proud of her. I love that. And I'm glad he's at peace and he's surrounded. He has family near him now, too, on the other side. And is he able to pop in and kind of see her and her children in her current life? Yeah. So he's saying that she, like he's always there with her um, and that she's very clear audit. So as soon, like as long as she keeps on the path, like they'll be in direct communication all the time soon. Perfect. Um, so he'll be able to talk to her. She'll be able to hear him soon. And um, when okay. she does her homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's saying like, just listen, like just put the intention out of connecting with him and then just listen, like just calm the mind, ask a question and then just listen and he'll be right there. Now he is, does he currently communicate to the grandkids? Yeah, so I'm seeing him around the sun a lot. Um, I just see him kind of like watching over all of them, like in the house a lot. So is he kind of a protector of them? Yeah, absolutely. And then he's saying that he also visits her mom. Oh. Um, I love that, that. He's kind of just watching over his family. Does he ever talk to the kids? Like, do the kids ever hear him? Yes. So I want to say the daughter has seen him. Okay. That's just like a vision that I'm getting. Um, so I don't know if she's ever had an experience like that, but he's telling me, yes. I feel like it's more like a feeling of love. Like, it's like all of a sudden, like, um, either her son with autism will just like really calm down and feel the love all like out of nowhere or it's like um, the daughter will just like feel this peace so I don't know if they're like fully aware of who it is but he just sends them all love um, very often and then he also like sends love to his her son when he's like having over sensory issues I love that and does he from his perspective since he's always watching over them does he see any negative entities around the kids yeah so I do feel one okay so we will um go ahead and let me just write that. I just want to ask that. Um, I think we've got actually all of our questions answered for Sarah. So we're going to move on to about the kids right now and just asking grandpa about the entities that he sees. And then we'll call in the kids higher selves or at least to her daughter's higher self. Does that work for the yeah. higher self? Yes. All right, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> here with us who's that other entity tell us what's going on okay so it is more of a negative entity and it's always been in the home but 
the home was in a lower vibration. So like the entity didn't really care. It was like comfortable. But since she's been doing like a lot of inner work lately, and I see like, um, her like, trying to speak light language and like do sound healing and stuff with their daughter. It's like it made the negative entity angry that has lived in that home for a while. Um, because it's raising the vibration of the entire home and it's making it uncomfortable. So I see him, it's like, he's like whispering things to the kids. Like he's whispering things um, to the son and the daughter, like trying to keep them in fear to lower the vibration of the home. Mm. So that entity came with the home basically. Yeah. So I have a feeling that he's been there for a while um, and he was very comfortable there. I feel like maybe he lived there before she did and he died in that house. Um, but it's like, he feels like that's his home and he's angry that the vibration has, is like increasing. So does the entity not want to move on? He looks like this, like old man that is stuck in his ways that just like wants to be in his home. Um, so what can we get from higher perspective from the higher self to understand what we can do to help this, them either cohabitate or help the gentleman move on? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a pyramid of protection around Sarah's home since she is the one that physically lives there now. Um, so we're just putting a beautiful pyramid of love, of unconditional love of source around the entire home, just completely protecting anyone that lives inside of the home. Um, sorry, it's like I saw him like move outside of the home and he is angry. So Archangel Michael is just going to come down with his net and he's just going to take this entity back to source just so that it doesn't affect anyone else. So he's just taking it back in his net, back to source. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we just want to um, get higher perspective. Did that entity, that gentleman, did he move on to source? Yes, yeah, so he was taken back to source so that um, he's no longer an issue. Well, I feel like it would be, it's uncomfortable for him is what he's feeling. Yeah, exactly. So that's like why they didn't really have a conversation with him about it was because um, he was not able to see the higher perspective. And since he was, um, since he was lowering the vibration of the home, he was actually affecting their free will. So that's why they were able to just take him back to source. So we just want to ask that you all place a protective golden barrier barrier around the home, around Sarah and her children, um, including their astral bodies, their spirit bodies, um, their physical bodies, that nothing can penetrate this barrier without their permission and knowing and consent by the highest council, such it will be. And they will fulfill their purpose on this planet beginning now. So, yeah, so they're just telling me, like, um, it would be really good. So when she does protect her energy, just go ahead and put that pyramid over the house every day. But there's really nothing to fear. And, like, uh, the dad is just, like, assuring me that he's there to watch over them. Um and Sarah's higher self is telling me that, like, there's nothing to worry about with the children. Like, we don't even really have to call in the daughter's higher self. Um, they're in communication. But her daughter is actually, like, very high vibrational. She's beautiful. And so is her son. It's incredible. So I would imagine this goes back to Lemuria and when Sarah taught the children how to, to operate in Lemuria. Um, She's obviously going through the things she is now. What can you guide her to on this lifetime that she can really help her children learn how to do to 
help enhance their gifts? She could practice speaking telepathically with her daughter and her son. So it's uh, I'm being shown that all of her kids are very Claire Audit as well. Um, so it's like something that they could just practice having fun with in the home. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I don't know, it's just like being a beautiful guide and role model for her children. Like her dad is just say, like reassuring, like, you're doing so good. And he's so proud of you for like the changes that you've made, and that you're on the right path. And that like your daughter is going to do like such beautiful things in this life. I love that. I love that. Well, any final messages from grandpa, dad, from the collectives, from higher self? They were just thanking me and you for doing this for her. Oh, we love you guys. And we love her. So it's absolutely. <laughs> our um, we're glad to be able to provide this, uh, this connection so that we could get some good healing for her and some, release for other beings that deserve to be in the light, you know? Thank you.